Hello, welcome back to another video in the Networker Learning Series. In this video, we will learn about Advanced File Type Device or as usually referred to as AFTD in Networker. We will look at how to configure and manage an AFTD device. So an AFTD with the go-to devices before the data domain were integrated with Networker. Backups to disk were meant to perform much better than the traditional tape backups as disks are random access devices whereas tapes are sequential access devices. Before AFTD, Networker had another kind of device called the FTD or the file type device. This device type is still available in the current version as well, but I don't think anybody uses it as of now. The FTD has a few restrictions that the AFTD has come over. The AFTD was designed for large disk storage system that use a volume manager to dynamically extend available disk space if the disk runs out of space during the backup. AFTD was meant to never become full or run out of space as it was integrated with another operation in Networker called staging. Now staging in Networker means moving a save set from one backup device to another. The staging could be configured to offload the save set from the AFTD to another device, mostly to a tape when it meets certain criteria. Let's look at the requirements for configuring an AFTD. So here are a few of them. The storage node where the AFTD is configured should have at least 8 gigs of RAM and if you are using client direct then the client should have at least 4 gigs of RAM. So each session to a AFTD consumes around 24 MB of memory on the storage node and on the client. The next requirement that we have is that the folder that we intend to use as an AFTD device can be a local file system or it can be a NFS or CAFS share on a NAS filer or maybe on another device which uh, you want to place the data in. So it is best practice to have this folder on a separate mount point or partition and not on the same partition or mount point as the OS resides. This is essentially to ensure that if in case your partition fills up, this does not cause your, uh, cause the system where, uh, where this particular folder resides to freeze or to crash because of the unavailability of disk space. The third requirement is not mandatory, but it is desirable to have storage capacity available in case the file system where the AFTD folder resides could be extended. Now let's look at the optimum AFTD device target session and max sessions. So the default settings on the AFTD target and max sessions typically provide you the optimum values for AFTD. So the recommended target session is one, and the recommended max session is 32. This is to avoid a disk crashing. This crashing is mainly excessive use of the hard disk for, that causes all other applications to slow down considerably. And it, it might also lead to your uh, hard drive uh, failing early. Now let's talk about uh, what concurrent operations AFTD. Now let's talk about what concurrent operations AFTD supports. So the AFTD supports the following uh, concurrent operations. So it can support multiple backups along with multiple recovery operations, multiple backups with one manual clone uh, operation, multiple backups and one automatic or manual staging operation. Starting from Network 8.0, multiple clone sessions can be run from a single AFTD if each clone is written to a dedicated tape drive. Right. All right, let's talk about creating an AFTD device. So we can create a new AFTD device or an existing AFTD device on Networker using the device creation wizard on NMC. You can, however, manually create the AFTD device as well. So the target folder, again, as said, can be a local folder or it can be a remote shared folder like an NFS or CAFS. Let's now get into the demo to see how to create, manage, and delete an AFTD device. Let's first take you to my networker server and look at the devices. We do not have any devices created as of now. 
Now let's hop on to the backup server and I'll show you where exactly we will be creating our uh, AFTD device. So I have created a separate mount point called AFTD. So this is uh, 10 gig for now. So we will be creating our AFTD device in here. Uh, if I show you my storage node as well, this is also containing the same kind of a mount point. So I'll be creating one AFTD device which will be local to the backup server and one as a remote device which will be on a storage node. So let's hop back to the NMC. To create a device, just right click under the device section, click on new device wizard. So out of all the options, select advanced file type or AFTD. Click on next. So next it is going to ask you which storage node you want to use for this. So this will be your networker server. So this is my networker server. If you want to use the storage node, go ahead and select the storage node. So that we will be doing next. So if you are using a CIFS share, you can go ahead and mention the credentials to access your CIFS share. Let's click on next. This is my file system and here is the mount point for your AFTD. So I'm going to create a folder inside this. Let's call it device one. Then select this. So keep in mind that this particular folder is not yet created on the server. So this is going to be the path that is AFTD device one. Next. Let's give a name. Let's call this AFTD underscore one. And click. So if there is any additional uh, parts that are to be provided, you can mention that here. For example, uh, for the client direct to be used on a Linux hosted mount point, you might have to provide the NFS uh, share location in here. So the target session is set to four and the max session is set to 32. Click on next. What kind of backup uh, pool you want to use? I'm going to use the the backup pool, and I'm going to use an existing pool here. So you, you can always create a new pool and assign it to that particular pool. And this is the summary of uh, the selection that we have done. So we're going to create a new directory. Then we're going to create the device, and that that device will be labeled to the default pool with a particular volume. So let's click on configure. That's done. And finish. So our local device is ready to use with the default pool. Let's now go ahead and create a remote device. So this remote device is going to be another Linux uh, system. So see how to do this. Create AFTD type. So now the storage node will be the Linux storage node. So we're going to browse and then click on next. Select that mount point and create a folder inside that. Oops, what's wrong? Select the mount point and then the new folder. And let's call this device one as well. Then next. We'll call this AFTD2.
and we'll leave the rest of the defaults as is. Uh, let's configure this as a clone pool. Right, so click on clone pool. Next, there is the summary and configure. All right, so the device is configured. We'll click on finish and there we have it. All right, so we have created the two AFTD devices for the Linux systems. Now let's try and create one on a Windows storage node. So the process is pretty much the same, or is all the same, I must say. Create, uh, select the AFTD device in the wizard, and then on the storage node, we will be selecting our Windows storage node. The rest of the things are remain the same click on next so again i have created a separate file system just for aftds and we are going to create a folder in there we are going to say the device one for this storage node you can name it anything you want there's no restriction on that but try to name the folders appropriately that's the selected path, the device name. We'll say device one again. I'm gonna leave everything default. Click on next. Uh, let's keep it as a backup type. Next. And config. And there you have it. Here are our three devices for the Linux as well as for the Windows system. Now that we have seen how to create devices that belong to the local file system, now let's go ahead and see how to create an AFTD device for a remote shared folder. So for this, we will be using the NFS feature on the data domain. So knowing how to do this will be handy because sometimes you might be in a situation wherein you might have to use you might have a data domain OS and a networker version that are not compatible with each other and upgrade or downgrade is might not be an option that you have at the moment because of time constraints or maybe some other reasons. But keep in mind that any of the data domain features, that is the DD boost features is not applicable when you're using a data domain as an NFS server. First, let's look at our NFS service. So you can you do this via our data domain system manager. All right, go to protocols. Before I go to protocols, I'm just going to show you that I have created a new M3 just for the AFTD. And then let's go to protocols and NFS. And as you see, the NFS version 3 is currently active. I have created a export for the uh, AFTD M3 that we have. So this is the one, right? And then I have allowed any, any uh, system to access this particular uh, folder. You can, however, restrict your uh, the respective servers that need to use this folder by mentioning their hostname or IP address in the export list. Let's go to our... All right, so let's configure the NFS on the backup server first. So let's mount it as an NFS share. So for this, let's do a show mount. Show mount and the IP address, host name of the data domain, and you will see that I have one export uh, list here or the export folder, which is a shared folder, and it has everybody has access to. It. So what I'm going to do is I'll create a directory in my mount folder called NFS. I have to write a sudo. And then let's go ahead and mount. So 
this particular device on that so this is the m tree that we had and we are going to mount it at this location so let's all right error there because of this all right it's mounted let's go to let me confirm that and you see that we have it mounted here let's go ahead and visit that location and then create a directory there or we can yeah we can create it via the wizard let's do that let's now get on the nmc right click new device wizard or maybe i'll i'll create one using the uh manual method uh, but for that i'll have to create a folder inside the location wherever i wanted to create the device on so let me create a folder called device 2 because this system already has a device 1 so that is done then let me go into device 2 grab the path right now let me switch over to my nmc i click new device properties i'll have to mention the path here or always mention it here so i'll give it a name ft underscore nfs underscore two yeah okay the type is advanced file type some down here adv file no other configuration leave everything as to default and click on ok yes if you want to verify the device path all right, let's go ahead and uh, label the device to the respective pool. Right clicking and clicking on label. And let's say okay. And there you have it. All done. AFTD supports volume sharing as well. So volume sharing is a configuration wherein two or more devices use the same uh, access information. So for AFTD, I don't see a use case to be honest, but uh, data domain is we do have a few use cases wherein if a particular uh, system is on older version of network and it cannot use client, client direct, then you can uh, create a volume sharing or a duplicate or a secondary volume for the same location on a storage node which is closer to that particular client so that the Client can send the data over to that storage node, and that storage node in turn will send it, send the data to the data domain. So let's okay, let's create a new folder and let's uh, maybe do a volume share for one of the devices. So this practically it doesn't have any uh, use, but just so that you know how to do. So underscore underscore two. So to create this is pretty simple. I give any volume name. The only criteria here is that the device access information should be same as the volume that you want to share. Type would be advanced file type. Keep in mind that the path that you're defining is already exists so do not label it if you label this device that means that you're actually labeling the entire volume itself so the data that resides on the volume will be lost please do keep this in mind so this can be directly mounted you do not have to label it again 
So if you look at the volume names here, you'll see that these two volumes are the same. All right. So this is all I have for advanced file type devices. Thanks for sticking with me till the end of this video. I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions or comments, share it with our community in the comment section below, or you can drop me a message at my Twitter account. I will see you on another video. Goodbye.